uh, for the organizers of this very nice conference, especially to uh, Jill Ho Ho Choi. Um, and today I want to show you um, modern computational photophysics using the shark package. So this shark package is a excited state non adiabatic molecular dynamics package that we developed in the Institute of Theoretical Chemistry in Vienna in the Gonzalez group. Um, and as it is a non-adiabatic dynamics code, it can be primarily used to study photo-induced dynamics. So for example, uh, some cases that we study in this group was the DNA photo damage um, or charge transfer in photobiology in different systems like uh, DNA or proteins or in photosensitizers of different kinds like organic or uh, transition metal complex photosensitizers used for different purposes or in molecular switches or small molecules that are, for example, important in uh, atmospheric chemistry. And um, yeah, photo-induced dynamics is also important in many more application areas like in spectroscopy, imaging, optogenetics, different medical and biological and chemical and physical applications that are very important nowadays. Um, and all of these kind of photo-induced dynamics in principally can be described um, computationally and theoretically. And um, how you can do so with the shark package, this is what I want to show you today. So the talk will have two main sections. In the first part, um, I will talk about the shark package, uh, the shark approach itself, which is a special flavor of surface swapping, and the under uh, the related shark software package, what it is and how it how it works. And then in the second part of the uh, presentation, I want to show you a couple of applications of some of the features of the shark package and how you can use them to solve uh, yeah chemical problems, how to gain insight, like Felix Plasser. Uh, stated it today, um, and how these different features can be combined to yeah, get more than the sum of the individual terms, maybe. So um, the shark approach is a non adiabatic dynamics approach. And yeah, non adiabatic dynamics is simply uh, described by the Zablonsky scheme. So we have some initial photo excitation, and then we have non adiabatic transfer, like internal conversion and into system crossing. But the Jablonski scheme is only a very simple way of describing this. And as we all have seen in many talks today and in the last days, this should be described much more precisely by using potential energy surfaces. And then when you describe the coupled electronic and nuclear motion on these potential energy surfaces, you can derive branching ratios, lifetimes, and reaction mechanisms, which is essentially what we're interested in. And to do so in uh, is a usable way, we need a theoretical method that can describe this coupled nuclear and electronic motion. Uh, and very important here is that this method is efficient on one side. So we want to have, be able to treat large systems with many atoms. And on the other hand, we want to be able to treat non adiabatic processes because otherwise we cannot describe photo-induced dynamics. And here, especially, we're interested in describing internal conversion and inter-system crossing simultaneously. So in a sense, I have now the honor to provide the complementary talk to the previous one uh, by Professor Vaganov, who was talking about statistical theories for long time scales. Now I want to look for a method that can describe inter-system crossing in a short time limit, in the non-statistical limit. And the method that we use in our shark software is indeed surface hopping, as was provided and explained on Monday uh, in a nice way by Professor Mario Babati. Just very briefly, a reminder. So this is classical nuclear dynamics on excited state potential energy surfaces. In the beginning, we excite our classical nuclei to an excited surface. Um, and we describe the classical motion of the nuclei on the surface, but we also described through the Schrodinger equation, the evolution of the electronic wave function, which is um, affected by the presence of non adiabatic couplings like plotted here. And if the electronic wave function changes enough, then we can hop from one potential energy surface to the other one. And then we follow the dynamics on this new surface. We can also do so, and this is usually done, do this with an ensemble of 
initial conditions, because then with this swarm of independent trajectories, we can gain statistical uh, results like branching ratios and reaction rates that we could not could not get with a single trajectory. Um, yeah, and as was also shown by um, Professor Seung Kyo Min earlier, surface hopping is not the very best method that you can have. Um, there are certainly theories that go beyond surface hopping and that allow for a larger accuracy. But anyway, surface hopping nowadays is still a very popular method because it is in a pragmatic approach with broad applicability. So even though you're missing a lot of quantum mechanic effects like nuclear quantum mechanical effects, zero point energy and tunneling and so on, and you have these decoherence problems, Anyway, still surface hopping is a simple method that gives you non-adiabatic dynamics, gives you branching, is relatively efficient due to the independent trajectories approach and classical trajectories. And it's very usable. It has a great interpretability and it's easy to implement. And that's, that these are reasons why we are using surface hopping in the shark package currently. Um, but the traditional surface hopping that was proposed many years ago um, had one big limitation that we wanted to overcome, and this was that it's uh, limited to internal conversion. Um, and that's why, uh, like 10 years ago, the shark approach was uh, developed. And the general idea is that we do surface hopping, including any arbitrary kind of couplings. And in order to do so, we need to add additional coupling terms to our electronic Hamiltonian or to the molecular Hamiltonian because the Hamiltonian describes, or yeah, you need to have these couplings inside the Hamiltonian to describe any process that you're interested in. And here um, in chart, we generally describe this as a sum of the standard electronic Hamiltonian that is used in almost every electronic structure program, including kinetic energy and Coulomb uh, interactions. And then you have an additional term that, for example, includes spin orbit couplings that you need for inter-system crossing. And then based on this uh, Hamiltonian, you need to, we also need to choose a representation for our potential energy surfaces, because we need the potential energy surfaces for doing the dynamics. And the most obvious solution would probably be what we call the MCH representation. And that is simply the basis of the electronic eigenstates of the standard electronic Hamiltonian that every quantum chemistry software uses, where you have uh, different singlets that show avoided crossings between each other. And then you have states of other multiplicities like triplets that show free crossings and are coupled through delocalized spin orbit couplings, for example. A second possibility of uh, representation is what we call the diagonal representation, which are the electronic eigenstates of the full Hamiltonian. So in the full Hamiltonian in this basis is diagonal. That's uh, the reason for this name. And in this basis, you do not have singlets and triplet states anymore. You have spin mixed, generally mixed states. Um, but all these states have the nice advantage that all the couplings between them are localized and that the spin multiplets are properly split into different components. So these properties are actually big advantages for surface swapping because through this splitting up of the uh, multiplet components, you get a correct description, a rotationally invariant description, and a proper energetic description of those. Um, and through the localization of all the couplings, you require a slow, smaller number of trajectories for statistical conversion. Hence, um, using surface hopping in this diagonal representation would be optimal. But as I said, Quantum chemistry programs only provide the MCH data. Um, and that's why the idea of Shark in general is that we take this MCH data, we perform an on the fly adiabatization to go into the diagonal representation. We transform all the data that is required and then we do surface hopping on this diagonal potential. Um, so this, was, this is the Shark approach, the Shark method. And around this method, we developed in the last almost 10 years, the shark package. Um, and the center of the shark package is indeed the shark molecular dynamics driver, which is a singular program written in Fortran um, that you can execute with a couple of input files and then it produces output files. So 
based on this, this is not yet a package. So we need more, of course, we need more than uh, more tasks than just running the trajectories themselves. And one of the most important tasks here is, of course, the up initial calculations that have to be performed on the fly at every time step. And for this, we require an interface between the shark driver and the electronic structure codes. Um, and we have different uh, interfaces for a couple of different programs like MolPro, MolCAS, Columbus, ADF, Gaussian, TurboMol, Orca, or Bagel, and a couple of other analytical surfaces that we can also use. But even that is not everything because, as I said, we need to have a large ensemble of trajectories and this cannot be done all manually. So we need some kind of trajectory management software that allows us to set up the trajectories, execute them, check them, whether there are yeah, any error occurred or not. And for this, we uh, implemented a couple of Python scripts that do these jobs. And then before even being able to set up the trajectories, one needs to uh, generate the required initial conditions, uh, which is also part of the shark package. And after the simulations are done, of course, the most important and most yeah, human, um, human time uh, expensive uh, part of the project is to perform an analysis of the data to gain chemical insight. And as all these steps require anyway a large degree of automatization and mod modularization, um, the shark package is a big collection of many different codes. As I said, the dynamics driver is a monolithic Fortran code, but then we have different Python scripts that uh, are the quantum chemistry interfaces that communicate to MolPro or Columbus or Orca. And all these different workflow steps here on the left side are also implemented through a couple of uh, Python scripts that communicate through well-defined uh, files. Um, and they could in the future also easily be replaced by other scripts in order to uh, allow to extend this uh, package quite easily. So the shark package um, is started being developed in 2011. And then we had uh, three major releases so far in 2014, 18, and 19. And these releases are publicly available. You can check them on our main homepage, which is sharkmd.org, which has all the um, uh, documentation and the feature description and the license, and is also linking to the GitHub where the code is residing. And as I said in the beginning, um, the shark package now is already developed for quite some time. So we have developed already a couple of uh, useful features that go beyond the simple own, yeah, surface hopping itself. And examples of these features are the core, one of the core things of shark is of course this ultra fast inter system crossing. Um, but there are other things like uh, on the fly charge transfer analysis where we employ the Theodore package of Felix Blasser um, we have now uh, different ways of including explicit solvation through QMMN methods. Um, we also implemented um, an analytical model, which is based on linear vibronic coupling Hamiltonians that can be quickly parametrized and then allow for extremely fast dynamics and rather small features that are nonetheless quite important in Shark are, for example, the possibility to simulate time dependent spectra or to um, take the population data that is the output of the simulations and perform different kinds of kinetic analysis in order to uh, yeah, fit kinetic models like an experimental you would uh, in order to gain time constants, rate constants and the like. And I want to showcase these uh, different features and a couple of applications of the shark package that we did in the last years. The first of these examples is ultra fast into system crossing in the rhenium three carbonyl complex. And the background of this is just that this rhenium complex here is used as a, has been used in the past as a photosensitizer to study electron transfer and proteins. And here, um, the first step is the excitation of this uh, metal complex uh, through light. And then it undergoes quick, very fast into system crossing. And this is, was the goal of our study. So we put the complex into um, solvation environment and started the simulations with a focus on the inter-system crossing. Um, and we extracted the population data, fitted those. And in 
interestingly obtained two different time constants. One was extremely fast on the order of 10 femtoseconds and one was slower on the order of hundreds of femtoseconds. And we studied, um, yeah, we analyzed the data very carefully and found out that this is actually due to two different physical processes. The first one is what we call electronic intersystem crossing because it even happens uh, in the same way if you freeze the nuclear motion. So this is really just uh, the formation of an electronic wave packet that evolves in time. Whereas the second time constant is due to nuclear motion and everything can be kind of summarized in this scheme where due to the large spin orbit couplings and the high density of states, and the system crossing is so fast that it equilibrates between singlets and triplets very quickly. But as the nuclear motion relaxes the system, um, yeah, after, after some time, this equilibrium is shifted more and more towards triplet states because those uh, provide the lower energy minima compared to the singlet states. So that would be uh, internal conversion, which is assisting intersystem crossing. And then we looked at these two different time constants, 10 and 200, uh, 420 femtoseconds, and compared those to experiment, which was 144 femtoseconds, and were fir at first um, discouraged because the agreement is not really good. But then we went further on um, because we thought that just comparing our population data to experimental spectroscopic data doesn't really make sense. So we should always compare spectroscopic data to spectroscopic data. And therefore we simulated the time resolved domain spectrum um, and obtained uh, a spectrum that looks kind of similar to the experiment. We were then integrated the spectrum over the different energies and performed a di exponential fit as in the experiment and actually obtained a time constant of 154 femtoseconds, which fits almost perfectly to experiment. And then this shows that these experiments do not really observe into system crossing directly, but they observe the decay from brighter states to darker states, which is kind of related to the system crossing, but not the same thing. 